Hi everybody, just a brief video today to talk about a tool, uh, External Reference Manager. Uh, that tool is going to help us as we deal with our XREFs, and specifically when we run into issues where our, our drawing files can't find the resources that it requires for it to function properly, whether that be finding fonts or finding plotting information or other files like images or X references and the like. So it's an oldie but a goodie. And I say oldie because it's something that's it's been around for at least five releases that I can uh, I can think of. Um, but because it's a tool that is used outside of our authoring application, any AutoCAD-based product, uh, it's it's often not thought about immediately. And it's uh, but it's still a very powerful tool. So let me show you how it would work. And what we'll do is we'll drill down and open up a file that has some references here, just so it's clear. On my C drive here, I've got a 2016 projects folder. I'll drill down into project X1, and I've got a number of folders that contain drawings and other resources that are required for my project. If we go in the production folder, I've got a, a drawing here called reference example. And if we open that up, it contains a, a few references that uh, you know bring in data from other locations in the project. If I type in XREF, we can see those different files. I see that uh, I've got an image as well as I've got uh, two details, uh, DWGs. I can see information about whether they're attached or overlaid. I can also see the path where they're currently located. Now in this case, because we see the entire path, these are absolute paths. I know some folks you know, swear by absolute, some folks swear by relative paths. There's pros and cons to both, no wrong way of doing it. Uh, in either case, we can run into situations at times where our files can't find the things that they need. So let's create a scenario where we, uh, we break it, and then we'll look at this tool and see how to resolve it. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close out of my Civil 3D here. I'm going to launch my Windows Explorer, and we'll come out onto the C drive and we'll create a problem here by going to 2016 Projects, and I'm going to cut or move that to a different folder, maybe out to my D drive. I've got a 2016 Projects folder, and we'll paste it there. All right. This could be something like the IT folks come in in the evening and they're doing some resource balancing on the system and moving some files around. So what was on the H drive today is now on the G drive tomorrow. This could be somebody has sent you files and it was set up on their X drive, which you don't have, and now it can't find the files that it needs. These types of things happen um, and we need uh, tools to resolve it. And let's take a look at one that we can use. We'll start by showing you where the, the tool lives and what the name of it is. Like I said, it's external to the application itself. If I was using Windows 7, I could access it by going to the Start button up to Programs coming down under Autodesk. I'd drill down and I'd look for the Reference Manager tool. Um, because I'm using Windows 8.1, I don't have a Start button, so I would go to Search and I'd do a search for Reference Manager and find it that way. I figured, uh, depending on your release or operating system, rather than going through all the combinations, I would just show you this is the application that you need to find on your system. And then what you can do is you can map a shortcut to it on your toolbar like I have. So let's go ahead and uh, minimize that. I'll come down and launch it off my toolbar. The Reference Manager comes up. Pretty easy uh, and intuitive to work with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add drawings and, um, you know, we'll add our file. Let's uh, let's go ahead. Well, now that I've moved that, I'm sure, and as I was doing it, there were folks that were kind of cringing that, you know, you know what's going to happen. Uh, it can't find those things. It's, let's, let's confirm that quickly. Um, I'm sure you know it's broken, but we'll just show you that it's broken. So we'll fire up Civil 3D here real quick so that we can take a look at that. Now, if we uh, come up here to the top, get the open icon here, and we'll drill down to D. 2016 Projects, X1, Production, Reference Example. My, my thumbnail still looks good. However, when I open it, we get what we would expect, a number of broken references. All right, so um, may or not, may not be uh, evident to us until we open the file. What this will do is give us the uh, ability to see what's broken and what's not working before we ever get that far. So I'm going to drill down to uh, my D drive Production, Reference Example. I'm going to click on Open. It's going to give us the option to add all X references regarding a nesting. Some people really, you know, nest X references fairly deep. You have the option to bring in all drawings to uh, resolve those or just, you know, bring in the first level of X reference 
files and, and just deal with that for now. In my case, it won't make a difference. We'll just tell it to load everything and it comes in. Now, a couple things that I would uh, point out when it comes in, we've got two primary screens here. One is going to give us an information with respect to like at the uh, parent level. And then we've got uh, this on this side is going to give us the information about the status. So what we're viewing right now is we're viewing it based on drawing file. We've only got one. Uh, it, we see a couple things with the icon. If uh, there are broken references, it'll automatically have a red line through it. And then I can expand this and see the different things that are contained within that file. So these things are broken. Um, shapes can find those. I know images, that's got something that's broken. All right. I can also come down here to the bottom and it will tell me how many drawings I currently have active in this and then how many are broken. So right now I, I guess I'm one for one. So uh, the other thing that we can do, and, and what I like, because if we're dealing with multiple files, it's a little bit easier to see. If we go to view, I can list by reference type. Then regardless of the number of drawings that we have, uh, we see all the references. So these are all of the things that uh, one or however many files we have in here require. Okay, now in my case, I see that uh, there are some things uh, broken. There are other things that are resolved. Uh, you can sort by clicking the uh, columns here at the, at the column header. Uh, I really like this because if you have a lot of files, I'm sure you can imagine it would scroll off the screen. If I hit status, I can immediately sort and have any of those things that aren't found or broken uh, pop right up to the top. I also can scroll back and forth to see other information about, you know, uh, the name of the file, where it's saved, where it's found, the host version. Um, we can even come in and, and uh, start uh, changing the different uh, columns, you know, hiding some or showing others. So in this case, let's take a look at one of our X references here. Uh, these were on the C drive before. They're obviously not found now. It's because they're on the D. What we could do is we could highlight one of the files. Let's say we'll right click and I'm going to come down and we can say uh, find and replace. And what we could do is we could find the uh, C colon and we could replace it with D colon. All right, you also see you've got buttons. We could drill right down specifically to where it's at and say it's here, and I'd like to point here in the future. When we say replace all, it makes a replacement. That file's been updated, or it's it's uh, we see it's in the process of being updated. Uh, we know that the change we, wait, we made, it's able to be resolved, and there's a pencil here now that we can click Apply Changes to, uh, to update that. So once it's updated, that uh, particular reference is, is fixed. So it, it went back into the original drawing and made that change for us. If we were to open it in the future, we'd see that that uh, correction has been made. All right, now, uh, I may have a folder full of files. I mean, this is great. Uh, I can do things in, in, you know, either individually. I could also select a, a number, of, uh, number of files, right-click, and start doing find replace as well. But I want to do more than just one drawing at a time. So if we look at Add Drawings here, by default, if we pick around in here, it kind of leads us to believe we can only do one file at a time, but that's not necessarily correct. If I were to go to the project level itself, uh, X1 here, and then go to Tools, I can go to Find, and we're going to look for all files with an asterisk, my wildcard, that have a DWG extension that are in this project folder. We're going to drill down into the subfolders. Oops. I don't want to do a new search. We'll say Find Now. Finds all the files that are in there. The first one is selected. I'm going to hold down Shift and select the last one. We'll click on OK. And we'll say Open. Uh, gives us the same option that we had before with respect to X references. This will apply to all files that it found. And now it, it uh, populates all of that data in here. So now we can scroll up and down. We can see all of the different things that uh, are required, whether or not those things can be resolved and, uh, or not, if they can't. Uh, we also have the ability that we can come back and we can start to list things by drawing. I see in this case now I've got seven drawings. Two of them have broken references. All right. Now, this is a very powerful tool. We already saw how we could fix one thing. Uh, this is a fantastic tool. If someone were to have sent me a file, one of the first things that I do is I open it up in this because then it would immediately tell me, am I missing fonts? Am I missing any plot configuration data? Uh, fonts could be either, you know, true types or uh, um, just shape files. 
Um, am I missing external references, any imagery, things like that, so that before I ever go to the authoring application, I know what I'm up against? If I can't find things, or maybe they set it up to use a, the folder structure that I'd like to do something different on my system, I can immediately reconfigure and start pointing things to the new location and uh, or remap the drive from X to D or whatever I'd like to use. And uh, I know that when uh, myself or anybody else opens the files in the future, we'll be in good shape. All right, so very, very powerful tool. Let's uh, come back. I'm going to, once again, like I said, we'll do this by reference type. I'm going to look at the X reference files. Uh, we can find uh, D89. Let's uh, take and select that guy. And, uh, oh, you'll notice I've also got a reference here. When you see dot dot in front of it, we know that the, the dot dot is for relative paths. If you're somebody that, you know what, I've got all these files and everything was set up to be absolute pass. You know, I can change the drive letters, but if the letters change again, then I'm still going to have a, an issue with that. I want to change them to relative pass. What's an easy way to do that? Well, we could do the find and replace to, uh, to update those. So I could uh, select this. Now, because they're both uh, different, we'll do them uh, individually. We'll say edit path. Uh, if they were the same, I could highlight them all and do this at once, but one's on C and one's on D already. So we'll do that. I'll do the same thing with this guy. We see that that's resolved. Even though that's resolved, I can still uh, edit it so that we see that those things are now uh, relative paths. All right, we'll go ahead and apply those changes. That's good. Uh, we'll come back. Uh, same thing with my uh, images. I see that those aren't found. Uh, let's go ahead and highlight both of those. We'll say uh, edit selected paths. And uh, you know what, let's, uh, well, you know what, let's just make those D. We won't make everything relative. We'll make this one, we'll leave those absolute. Okay, those are resolved. We're able to apply those changes as well. All right, very powerful tool. Uh, I'm able to, uh, to go through and identify these things very quickly, what I can find and what I can't find, and I can uh, make corrections. The other thing that I would uh, point out as well, like I said, if someone were to send me files, and uh, let's say that it couldn't find some fonts or other resources that I required, just wasn't part of the package that they sent me. I'd want to be able to identify those things in an email or a correspondence back to them. Then again, I don't want to have to be like, you know, writing down what each one of these things are that it's missing. What we can do is we can do a, a report. So if we were to say uh, export report, uh, let's come down uh, report one. We'll put that uh, 2016 projects. We'll just put it right up there. It's a CSV file. I could set it up a couple of different ways. We'll just do it CSV. We'll say save. And then if we come back out to Explorer here, uh, come back out to my folder, we'll open up the CSV file. And what we'll see is, is all of that information now in, in uh, columns that uh, we can expand and contracts so that we, we see that we've got access to the information. So if I needed uh, or some of this data wasn't able to be found, I can now start doing some things like copying and pasting, moving that into uh, you know my email or other correspondence or report back to them that said, hey, I got your your files, but uh, it's currently missing these things. I, I still are, you know, I'm going to require those as well for it to uh, function the way that it was originally intended. So uh, not going to worry about that for right now. Let's uh, let's do this. Uh, we'll come back to uh, view. We'll look at the list by drawing. Come down to the bottom. We see there's seven drawings. No more broken references. So all of that looks all right. Let's go through and uh, we'll fire uh, Civil 3D back up and see if everything functions the way that we expected. So go ahead and bring that up. Um, now, uh, every time that I've run this, just so that you know, the, uh, the drawings in that have come up uh, found you know, been found perfectly. Uh, sometimes if I have an image, uh, it will be found, but it will be unloaded and I'll have to reload that. So let's, let's take a look at what we get. So, uh, same file we were in before reference example. Let's uh, confirm that that's on the yep, D drive reference example. We'll say open. Okay, we bring it in. It automatically finds those files. Uh, we see that my, my image is blank. It is there and it has been uh, resolved. Let's bring up our XREF dialog, and we'll see that uh, it found our references. Uh, they're now relative as opposed to absolute. And for my images and the cases where uh, it doesn't uh, reload it automatically, we'll go ahead and just reload that. It's, uh, it's identified and found, and uh, we're good to go.
so those files come back up for us. So once again, phenomenal tool, the external reference editor. We can use it for a number of different things. QA, QC, before we send files out. Maybe before we, uh, uh, when we receive files, before we ever bring them up in our authoring application, we can use it to resolve um, where files have been moved or uh, altered with respect to location on our system, identify what, uh, what's required and if we have all the things that we need for our, our uh, project information to function the way that it should. So very powerful tool. Hope it helps you and uh, look forward to talking to you again. See ya.